Hi guys and welcome to Tech Based. In this video, we're gonna talk about the latest Windows 11 Insider preview build for the dev channel, which is the build 22,557. I've just installed it today. This build came out last night, but as you will see, this is the biggest build we've had yet on the dev channel, and we have a lot to talk about in this video, so that's why the video is coming today. So Microsoft took their time into releasing this new build. As you can see, this is a pretty big jump for the build number. So they worked on this build for about three weeks so we have a lot to talk about in this video i'm gonna try to focus on the most important things and the things that interest me more and uh, of course as always you're gonna have an article down below with all the new things and features listed and of course links to the microsoft website where you can see more details about every single feature in particular starting with this build there are a few changes in windows 11 for the dev channel as you'll see the name of the branch that they are releasing this build is changed to ni underscore release which comes from nickel as i've said nickel will be the name of the next windows 11 update but microsoft is also stating that the branch in which they release builds from to insiders in the dev channel is irrelevant to the features or improvements included within them another thing that needs to be said about this build is that this build will not be offered to arm 64 pcs so they will release it to arm 64 as well maybe in the next week's build or something like that these things being said don't forget to leave Leave a like down below and also subscribe to the tech base channel if you want more videos like this and if you want to stay tuned when i post another video let's get on with what is new in this new build what i can tell you is that i'm really excited because this build has a lot of features that we as users requested for a long time to the windows 11 developer so first of all we have app folders in the start menu this is a really interesting thing that you can use you can basically pin multiple apps into a folder like that you can save up space for other apps and stuff like that how you can use this just open up the store menu of course and drag and drop an app on top of another and you will be creating an apps folder here that you can click on and access it and of course you can add multiple apps into another folder as you can see this looks pretty well of course it needs a little bit of a touch-up as you can see some animations are a bit delayed and stuff like that but in my opinion this is really really good and i really like this thing and if you're wondering how you can delete or remove these folders just drag and drop into an empty space each and every app from that folder and that folder will disappear another thing that microsoft is stating is that they will bring up a lot of improvements to this in the next build so for example the ability to name and rename folders in some future builds so stay tuned for that but this is a great step i really love this new feature microsoft is also introducing do not disturb and focus do not disturb will make it easier to silence notifications and focus is a new experience that enables everyone to stay in the moment and minimize the distractions on their PC. Do Not Disturb can be easily turned on by clicking on here in the notification area and go here and click on this button and you'll see that Do Not Disturb is on. You'll only see banners for priority notifications and alarms. Of course, you can set up and customize the notification settings into details. So you can just go into notification settings and you'll be redirected to the notification section of the settings app in Windows 11. And in the same place, you can set up focus. As you can see here, you have the ability to set up a timer. So for example, you want to focus on to learning or studying something for 30 minutes just set up the 30 minutes timer and then click on this button to start the focus session and taskbar badging will turn off flashing of applications in the taskbar will turn off a focus timer will appear on the screen and do not disturb will turn on automatically of course you can still personalize this into setting system and focus but you can stop it by clicking on this stop session button if you want to stop this before the session is finished and of course end session in the notification center to finish the focus Focus session. I think this is pretty interesting for Microsoft. Another thing that I'm going to talk about briefly is live captions. So live captions will help everyone, including people who are deaf or hard of hearing, better understand audio by viewing captions of spoken content. I'm not going to go in depth with this because I'm not really interested in this, but you're going to have more info about that in the article down below and also on the Microsoft official blog if you're interested about that. Microsoft is also improving quick access in File Explorer. So if you open File Explorer, you'll see that we have the recent files or the quick access as you know it so now pin to quick access support has been extended 
from only supporting folders to now also supporting files. So you can easily pin files here. You can right click on it and click on pin to quick access. And you can do that with also files as opposed to only folders in the builds before. And if you are logged into your Windows operating system with a Microsoft account or work account, basically everything you pin in office.com will, will be also pinned in your quick access section in File Explorer. And I think that is really, really good. Also, if you have OneDrive set up, you now will be able to see more info about the storage consumption and stuff like that directly into your File Explorer. In my case, I don't see it because I don't think I have OneDrive correctly set up right now, but you're going to have a screenshot to see how that looks. Another thing that I'm going to jump over briefly are the new touch gestures. So for people that are using touch screens, we have new touch gestures and you're going to have more info about that in the article down below. More exactly on the Microsoft website and their blog post, you'll see every new touch gesture explained and how you can use it. Another huge thing for me is that Microsoft is also improving snap layouts. So let me show you what I mean. I have a file explorer window opened up here. I'm just going to drag and drop it to the top and you'll see that the snap Snap layouts appear automatically and I can easily snap my window into any portion of the screen if I want and that is really really fast and really really good in my opinion. That's what you call an improvement and Microsoft also added some new animations to the snap layout so as you can see if I'm moving my window on my screen we have some new animations and they look pretty pretty good in my opinion. Really really nice for Microsoft. Microsoft is also adding more sustainable power settings and recommendations. The default values for sleep and screen off have been updated to reduce energy consumption and carbon emissions when PCs are idle. So again, also about this, you're going to have more info in the article down below, but this new section actually looks pretty good and it's pretty useful in my opinion. Of course, Microsoft will bring on a lot more updates into this section, but as for a first preview, this looks pretty good. And as you can see, we have some recommendations here that we can do, or if we are not interested in them, we can ignore them and that's really good. Microsoft is also adding more improvements to browsers the web in Microsoft Edge with Narrator. So a whole bunch of fine tuning things added to Narrator to help you with Microsoft Edge browsing. More info about this in the article down below as well. Another huge thing in this new build is the Task Manager Redesign and Efficiency Mode. I showed you a few builds before the hidden Task Manager that of course was in that build, but now Microsoft released a first preview, a first official preview of the new Task Manager. And let me show you how it looks and what new features or settings we can see there. I'm just gonna right click on the Start menu and then click on Task Manager. And as you can see, this is the new Task Manager. Of course, from running it first, you can see that it is still a little bit bugged. It is the first preview build indeed. As you can see, it is a little bit bugged here in this top menu, but I'm just gonna open navigation and we have processes, performance, app history, startup apps, users, details, and services. And we also have settings regarding this app. So as you can see, we have the default start page. We can set any of those pages to be the default start page. When I'm clicking on an empty space, this section doesn't disappear, but I think that Microsoft will work on this in the next build. Real-time update speed, you can set it to high to see a more real-time update speed, window management, and other options. Of course, new design for buttons, so for example, run new task, view, and we also have a button that doesn't do anything, but of course, Microsoft will give it a purpose in the next few builds. Let's see the other pages. We have performance, basically the same as it was in the old task manager, but of course, we now have the dark mode, which is a huge, huge improvement. We also have these three dots here, which we can use to copy or access the resource monitor really useful we have the app history we also have startup apps users details and also services now regarding some changes to the task manager i have to give you more context so you know what i'm talking about last april microsoft experimented with a new feature called echo mode in task manager and now microsoft is bringing this back with a new brand name called efficiency mode so this feature is helpful when you notice an app is consuming high resources and you would like to limit its consumption so that the system System gives priority to other apps which will lead to faster foreground responsiveness and of course better energy efficiency. This will be available using the command bar in the processes page in Task Manager but unfortunately it is only available to a few insiders so that option would be somewhere around here as you can see efficiency mode but I don't have it enabled or I don't have it available in this build but it will slowly come up to all insiders in the dev channel. Regarding this new Task Manager I'm really glad that Microsoft finally introduced the new dark mode 
mode, task manager, and of course, it still needs a lot of work, but that's how Microsoft is slowly and slowly creating a really nice operating system in Windows 11. Microsoft is also introducing a new PowerShell module to provision language and language-related features. More info about this in the article down below. Now, another huge thing, drag and drop is now back in Windows 11. So finally, Microsoft, after a few months, decided to bring back the drag and drop to Windows 11 to be more exact in the Windows 11 taskbar. So that is really, really good. Let's just test this out. So I'm just going to open a file explorer window and let's just try to drag and drop a file to the browser, for example. As you can see, this looks pretty, pretty nice in my opinion. And it is really, really fast. Finally, Microsoft implemented this by default. We needed this. We asked for this and we finally got it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Microsoft also introduced some new visual changes to Microsoft Teams. So for example, you will be able to see in your taskbar which window or app is currently being shared on the share screen and that is really cool. On PCs with more than one color profile, you will be able to add a quick setting to switch more easily between these modes. On clean install, the color profile button should not be pinned by default, but it might appear on upgrades. They also added a cast icon. If you're using the Windows Plus K combination on your Windows operating system, you will have a new icon into your task manager if you are casting your screen to another display. Microsoft also updated the battery charging indicator to use a lightning bolt instead of a power cable. That is also pretty nice. Another huge thing in File Explorer is that now File Explorer will show previews of items within folders. So as you can see here, we have these new folder icons which show you some previews of what files or other folders you have into a certain folder in File Explorer. Again, a huge thing and I'm really glad that Microsoft finally reintroduced this because we had it in Windows 10. Also in the File Explorer, if you choose to share a local file to Outlook by using this button, you will be able to compose an email message directly within the share window without having to go into Outlook directly. That is really good, but you will need the Outlook desktop integration installed via the store and this capability is unavailable for files stored in OneDrive folders as OneDrive has its own share experience. Changes regarding search as well. Searching for apps and settings in the Windows search box on, on the taskbar is now even faster and more accurate than before. Regarding this, they also fixed an issue that prevented Windows users from being able to search for an app in the first few seconds after it had been installed. Changes also to task view and also visual changes for the snap groups and that is really, really good in my opinion. Also, it is now easier to move your cursor and windows between monitors by letting your cursor jump over areas where it would previously get stuck. So this would be normally controlled into system display, multiple displays, and ease cursor movement between displays. We also have a new male natural voice called Guy for the narrator, and also some more commands that you can use with the voice typing feature in Windows 11. Regarding graphics, Microsoft is also expanding the dynamic refresh rate DRR experiences on laptops with 120 hertz displays. This will be noticeable when using Office and scrolling and also the low latency inking. More info about this in the article down below. Changes also to HDR and more optimizations for windowed games if you are playing windowed games. To enable this feature, you'd normally have to go into settings and then system, then go to display and then to graphics and then change default graphics settings. And you'll have here also the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling and also optimizations for windowed games, which is automatically turned on. Basically, it will reduce latency and use advanced features in compatible games by using flip presentation model, you'll need to restart your game for changes to take effect. That is really, really nice. Regarding input, we have changes to the on-screen keyboard and also a few emojis were redesigned as a result of users' feedback. Regarding settings, Microsoft improved the searching results when you search for a certain setting in the settings app, of course. They also increased the size of the icons in the settings navigation pane to make them a bit easier to see. Storage sense will now be enabled by default for PCs going through OOBE. Your current settings will be persisted on upgrade, but if you reinstall or do a clean install, you will have storage sense automatically turned on. Microsoft also updated settings time and language category and date and time page to now include a live digital clock and information about current selected option. They also updated the design of network and internet and then dial up when you have a connection set to align with the overall design of settings in Windows 11. And they also made some adjustments to personalization and fonts to improve the design
percent of the page including that the drag and drop area where installing fonts is larger now so you can use it a bit better regarding windows sandbox microsoft made also some changes to sandbox it will now support basic environment variable usage like user profile and also modify our keys and shortcuts will now be intercepted by windows sandbox if the window has focus other changes in this build microsoft also updated the accessibility flyout on the login screen to align with the windows 11 design principles insiders will now notice the mica material in more title bar surfaces so for example now the run box has that and that is really cool and also a change similar to windows 11 home edition windows 11 pro edition now requires internet connectivity if you choose to set up device for personal use msa will be required for setup as well you can expect microsoft account to be required in subsequent wip flights i don't know if this is good news or not but i'm looking forward to hearing from you in the comments about this of course in this build we have a whole bunch of fixes but i'm not gonna go about fixes i want to keep this video as short as possible so if you're interested in fixes check out the article down below for the whole list of fixes in this build and also for the known issues to know what to expect from this build so as i've said this is the biggest windows 11 build for the dev channel we've had yet 22,557. i think this is the best one yet we have the new task manager the drag and drop is back apps folders and start menu also the thumbnails for folders that is really good so i'm really looking forward to hearing from you in the comments about this new windows 11 etc preview build for the dev channel if you've tested it if you enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like down below and also subscribe to the tech base channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one i was emmanuel from tech based until next time have a nice day